Four minutes after 10, um, call to order the uh, Wasiga Beach Advisory Committee on Tourism for Tuesday, August 30th. Uh, welcome, everybody. It's been two and a half years, more than two and a half years since we've been able to sit down. Uh, we've got COVID to thank for that, but uh, I'm sure that this is not the only casualty of, uh, of COVID. We've had a difficult time. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to uh, start today um, by doing a round table. I think we'll do that before uh, going to uh, um, uh, uh, finding a vice chair. Does that make sense as a point of, uh, so what we'll do is, I know most people are on the table, but uh, there's a lot of people that we don't know. So let's start with, uh, with going around the table. I'll start. Uh, my name's uh, Chris Stein. I'm, uh, <coughs> I'm a chairperson for the, uh, the committee. Um, uh, my background, I was uh, director of marketing for 27 years with a, a national food chain, but um, a resident of Wasega Beach for, I think, 13 years. And, um, and I've also um, uh, been involved with other areas around the, uh, the, the community uh, with the um, uh, I'm with uh, the TC3 L T T3 accelerator program, I'm a, a, I'm a, a coach and advisor for uh, for working with um, tourism businesses around the counties, and um, and was happy to be part of this group here. Uh, joined it at its conception, and um, proud to be part of Wasiga Beach and uh, help serving any way I can. Dan. Not used to this. Uh, anyways, a real uh, owner, um, partial owner of uh, the core team, real estate team. Uh, we also own some businesses in Blue Mountain, including uh, the cheese, the grilled cheese uh, restaurant across from Starbucks, and uh, a, a basically a property management company that runs uh, personal uh, SDA properties. You know, so I lived here about 10 years now, and uh, glad to have moved up. Happy to be here. I try to take do some uh, stuff within the community as well, you know, uh, some of the uh, sports leagues and whatnot. So. That's basically it. <laughs> Hi, my name is uh, Wendy Fox, and um, I my heart is in Wasaga Beach. <laughs> I fell in love the second I moved here. I've lived here for over 30 years. I'm a local businesswoman here. I own uh, one of the town's local pubs, uh, Studs Lonigans, and I've owned that for 20 years now. And um, I'm lucky that I get to speak with lots of people every day about the hope goings on of Wasaga Beach. And I um, guess that's about it. I'm Ken Rudin. I have uh, retired from Pill Regional Police. I did a short stint with Toronto Police. And I've been a resident in Wasaga Beach for 23 years. And I'm very happy here. And uh, I've been enjoying being on the committee, and I hope we're going to keep on going. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> Good morning, Sylvia Bray, Deputy Mayor for the Town of Wasaga Beach, so the Council representative of this committee, and uh, so happy to be back in person and seeing people again. So thank you for being here. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Gary Hendry. I'm happy to be part of the committee. We are, I was one of the uh, founding members. Uh, my role is, uh, is secretary um, with the committee. Uh, we did get to go to the conference back in 2018, I believe, Sylvia. Um, so that was quite some time ago to uh, revisit tourism. Uh, I've been. I grew up here. I'm, I, I was born in Collingwood, and uh, I do live in Wasaga Beach. I'm a member of the Canadian Coast Guard. When I'm off, I'm here and enjoying myself. And I'm hoping we can keep this committee going and um, hopefully shape uh, Wasaga Beach a bit better. We did really well with the new sign. I'm quite impressed. Yeah. My name is Agata Mihalak and I've been a resident in Wasaga for just a little bit longer than COVID hit, so about three years, yeah. Um, I obviously love it here. My background is in IT. I am from Toronto, 
and uh, so far I've been on the uh, board of directors of my sailing club and I just wanted to see how this town runs and being a huge tourist destination, um, you know, see if I can help shape that uh, future. Hi, I'm Jenny Elmsley. I'm uh, with Free Spirit Tours. We run a canoe, kayak, stand-up paddleboard rental business and tour company um, on the Nottawasaga River. Um, and I'm really happy to be part of this committee because, you know, Wasaga Beach is amazing and um, there's so much um, potential and opportunities in this town and a lot of passion <laughs> in this town so um, I'm really excited to be part of this committee yeah thank you everyone um, help me with this uh, next uh, should at this point should we go to the uh, vice uh, identifying a vice chair yes that would that would be perfect okay. and I'll just introduce myself too if I may oh, chair sorry. no that's okay so my <laughs> so my name is Caitlin Wansma and I'm the economic development officer here at the town of Wasega Beach and I'll be serving as the staff rep on this committee uh, so the next item of business is to appoint a vice chair and I'd also like to appoint a secretary treasurer and I'll put my name down first um, uh, for that for secretary treasurer Very good. Um, so, uh, are there any um, anybody from the floor wish to put their name in for? Uh, oh, yes. <clears throat> Sorry, through you, Chair. Um, just bef prior to uh, nominating for this position, I just have to note that um, because we did not put this formally on the agenda and we are adding it now, we'll just have a resolution which I can read out for you. Uh, it would just be to. Um, to break the rules of procedure to add an agenda item to deal with the appointment of a vice chair. So we would just need a mover and a seconder for that first and then we can go ahead to that item. Silly Brick. Second. Yep. Favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay. So is anybody around the table wish to put their name in for uh, for vice? I would like to suggest, Gary, um, I think that it, it, as your role of secretary, uh, it will change, I believe, given that uh, those particular functions are going to be uh, taken over by Caitlin, and, uh, and that I think that you can carry on at a, at a higher level by supporting as a vice chair of this committee. That's my thought. Would you let your name stand as a? Sorry, uh, Chairperson. Would anyone else like to step step up to the plate? Or step in? So what's the formal motion? Through you, Chair. So at this point, um, uh, is it Gary, you said? Sorry. Uh, we have Gary um, being Gary nominated Hunter. with no other interest from committee members, so we would just call for a vote here to appoint Gary as Vice Chair for the Advisory Committee on Tourism. Okay. Um, all in favor? Oh, okay, so I'm sorry. Okay, we, we, we need someone from the table to move that uh, Gary Hendry be... Uh, put for, put forward as uh, vice chair of the committee. Do we I'll some? second that. Okay, and didn't get an informal person to move it. Sylvia, right? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Congratulations. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, next item is. Uh, do we have any uh, disclosure of uh, pecuniary interest? So in other words, uh, does anybody around the table have any conflict, whether personal or business, that would be a conflict of interest of business being taken around this table today? And uh, if not, we'll move on to the next item. Um, adoption of minutes uh, from February 10th, 2020. That was our last meeting. <coughs> 
Um, has, has everybody read the minutes? Sometime a long time ago, or just recently when it was sent out again? Uh, I have read them as well, and I have, in my review, I've not seen anything requiring modification. Uh, anyone else that sees any type, any changes that need to be made to our last minutes? Then could I have a motion that the Advisory Committee of Tourism Minutes of February 10th, 2020 be accepted as presented? Yeah. Yep. Ken, we have a second? Jenny? Um, can Jenny, is Jenny? I'm sorry? Oh, Gary, your, your mic's on. So if I may, uh, Jenny represents the Chamber of Commerce, Chamber of Commerce. so she's a non-voting member. But you're still important to us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Wendy? You're, so secondly, uh, Wendy. Uh, all, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, the next items, we're going to fly through the first part really easy. The next items, uh, there are no deputations or presentations. There are no, there's none, no unfinished business, and there is no subcommittee reports. Uh, which brings us on to new business. New business, item, uh, item 7 1, um, terms of reference review. I think I can, uh, Caitlin, I can take the ball on this completely and you'll, uh, you'll come in at a different point. Um, you'll see that there is a, um, a motion that is, uh, that is on the agenda. Uh, and I'll read the motion before, uh, before we get into a little bit more discussion. Uh, the motion is that the Advisory Committee on Tourism receive the uh, draft amended uh, terms of reference for review. The reason why this is on the agenda uh, um, and I, I think that probably everybody, everybody was sent the terms of reference. The terms of reference is basically what is it that we do and what is expected of us from this committee? What's our job? And um, as a background, uh, back in June, in consideration that we were going to be getting together again uh, and reconvening, I... Um, uh, uh, Caitlin Mosma, um, as well as uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Bray, and uh, uh, and myself, we met with um, with Mayor Bafulci, with the idea of of taking a look at what it was what we were doing as a committee, because uh, I think that in the year and a half that we were working as a committee, we could see that there were some things that we were doing that were productive, and some things that we were doing that just felt as if we were spinning our wheels a little bit. Um, one thing specifically I'll bring forward is the um, is our discussion with the um, uh, tourism destination management plan. It's a 75-page document that is very strategic in nature. Uh, was put together uh, for a previous council and w was one of our key uh, 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 terms of reference that we were supposed to go through and make recommendations on this document. We spent a lot of time working on it. Um, I felt as if we, it was very difficult for a committee that was spending uh, two hours a month to be able to make something like this happen. So with that in mind, uh, I, I wanted to sit down with the, with the mayor and, and say, you know, how can we as a committee serve the town and serve the council in a more fruitful way so that we can be productive that we can you know, make a difference, uh, make a difference because we're all around this table because we care about Musega Beach and we want to make a difference. So the intention of the adjustments that we've made to the terms of reference is, is essentially to simplify it, to make it more broad based so that, so that, that we can provide insight be a sounding board for the town and the various departments and to be able to provide feedback uh, to council and to the town in ways that it can be uh, put to work and that it can be uh, f f 
so that our work here can be far more productive. Um, this is what was sent to you. I'm going to open it up on my screen too, if it allows me. So the, the areas in the red are the adjustments. I'm going to open up my screen so I'm not turning my back to you. Okay. Um, I'll start with the... This is not a change, but I'm going to read it anyway. It's the purpose. The role of the uh, committee is to provide advice, comments, and recommendations to Council on Tourism Services activities and initiatives to promote the municipality. The committee will represent a variety of tourism stakeholders and will work with staff to further tourism, uh, further tourism focus strategic goals and initiatives as set out by the council. These are some of the changes or adjustments that have been made in order to help us do our job better. Provide advice and recommendations to council and staff on matters affecting the tourism industry, act as a sounding board for new tourism ideas and initiatives, provide insight and advice on tourism-related initiatives, identify gaps and barriers in tourism products in order to improve the visitor experience, make recommendations on how to address these gaps and barriers, provide feedback on towns tourism campaigns and initiatives. Provide advice and recommendations to Council on the implementation of Council's approved documents. And you can see that the tourism destination plan has been specifically removed because they can come to us with all kinds of ideas. Assist in the communication of the Wasega Beach tourism brand. We've done a lot of work there as a committee. Um, these are areas that have been removed. Assist in the communicating, uh, and, no, that's all been removed. Are you following me with me, uh, Caitlin? Yes. Okay. Um, identify gaps have been removed. Um, act as a positive tourism ambassador um, uh, bu -bu -bu for the town of Wasega Beach within and outside the community build positive relationships between Town of Wasega Beach and all tourism um, uh, stakeholders. And down under identify. Identify new partnerships, opportunities with, with stakeholders within tourism industry, such as uh, the Chamber of Commerce, Ontario Parks, Wasega Beach uh, Provincial Parks, Simcoe County, Regional Tourism Organizations, 7 RTO7, and the Ministry of Tourism, Culture, and Sport. Um, further to all that, um, it has been recommended uh, to add to this is that uh, down where we have the committee will be comprised of five to nine voting members as follows. With you there? Okay. One change that I think is, if we look around the table, that's a real miss considering how important it is as part of uh, who we are as, as, as Wasega Beach, is I think it would be valuable for us to have a representative from Ontario Parks sitting around this table. When we, because so much of when people think of Wasega Beach, when tourists think of Wasega Beach, Ontario Parks is a big part of it. And I think it would be great for us to be able to include them and to discuss uh, items with them. I believe that's all I have on there. That's, um so anyways, is, um, does it make sense on what we were trying to achieve with this adjustment? Yeah? Were there any other th items? Yes, go ahead, Deb. 
I see that the identified gaps and barriers in the tourism products have striked from the agenda. Is that on purpose or? Going back up. Sorry, Matt. Yeah, identify gaps in the tourism products and barriers to provide. Is that not something we should be looking at as part of this committee or? Yes, very much. Um, it's, I think it could be left in there. I, the other, the other areas within that we've, we've, we've added, sorry? Yeah, it does say right on here, it, there's a, it's, it does say within it, it says identify uh, gaps and barriers in the tourism products in order to pr improve the visitor experience, make recommendations on how to address these gaps and, and ba uh, barriers. That is in it. Further up. Yeah. Do you see it there, uh, Caitlin? Yeah, I'm just yeah, they're right there. Right here. It so is there. Okay. it is still there. Yeah. Yeah. So some of the lines that have been struck in are because we reworded those captions or those lines. Any other discussion on this? Yes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, under the committee composition, I wonder about including somebody from the county of Simcoe, their tourism organization, or possibly RTO7, just to give a broader scope to the group. And I, we could invite them in as a guest and have them speak once a year, but I wondered if there would be interest at that level to include them. That's kind of a one suggestion. Second suggestion. Um, is there a particular area of the uh, uh, of the county that would be um, uh, identified as, as a, a specific stakeholder that we could uh, say someone from this particular area? Yes, there is a tourism. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's me. Uh, yeah, so we could find a rep from Regional Tourism Organization 7, so they do Bruce County, Simcoe County, and Gray County, so they represent that area, or we could look into a smaller region, which is South Georgian Bay Tourism, so they do like the like Collingwood, Meaford, Clearview. Um, I, th I, I think that's a great suggestion, if we can get one person that represents that, at least if, if, if they're... You know, I, I don't. I don't believe they have to be a voting member, but I think as a, um, um, you know, you know, certainly as a stakeholder, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Certainly, uh, Age Friendly has a couple of different representatives, and they just bring a different perspective. Yes. Um, and they also bring the resources because the next levels up up is probably doing things that we may or may not have easy access to, and it's nice to work together and just, you know, be part of it and make it bigger and better. Great suggestion. Um, I have a couple more. Yep. <laughs> um, the uh, more for the clerk, perhaps, but on page in the agenda, it's page 17. The top item says only members of the Wasaga Beach Advisory Committee on Tourism may be members of subcommittees. So, in other committees I've sat on, the idea for a subcommittee was that you could bring additional resources into that subcommittee because they were, um, in the case of the healthy community the bicycle subcommittee um, has cyclists and members of the local bike, biking club and people that bring more to the table than, than the one person that sits there that may or may not have a bicycle. Mm -hmm. So I'm just from a, probably a clerk's perspective, um, I'm just not sure why that restriction is in here. I don't know either. It, it, it's, it, it, I love that suggestion because it would put us in a position where we could have one person around this table head up a subcommittee and uh, and 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 pull together you know other people and then report back to this committee with 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 ideas and findings um, is there any reason why we why we have it this way uh, through your cha through you chair it might potentially be with the fact that you are all appointed by council to be members and as such you can just go on and, and create these subcommittees with people who are appointed I, I don't really know why there would be a restriction you're absolutely able to invite stakeholders and people to come and maybe make presentations or give um, feedback but uh, let me double check because I'm not too sure why uh, the only thought I can have is that you since you're appointed 
to act on behalf of council that you just keep creating groups of yourselves. So I can check and get back to you, let Caitlin know for sure. But if, if there's not a reason why, then I don't see why that can't change to allow for stakeholders. Could we, um, could we uh, remove that particular clause off of this and then uh, await for uh, approval from council? Sure, I think maybe if you want to include that as part of your edits, and if for some reason there is a, um, a procedural or legal reason why it's done that way, we can put it back on, but maybe you can include that for now as part of your edit. That would be fantastic. Thank you. Oh, Sylvie has more. I have one more. I sit through more meetings than most. So when I went through it, the, la the final thing was all meetings will be open to the public, which I hundred. 200% support, but I'm just questioning why we're live streaming um, because I think it adds a level of formality to this meeting that sometimes hinders I'm, easy I'm, discussion. I'm for, wait, this, this under meetings. Uh, it's under meetings, the fourth point. All meetings will be open to the public, absolutely, mm -hmm. but there's nowhere in our terms of reference that say that they will be live streamed. Um, and again, no problem having them recorded for the records, but I'm just not sure about the need to live stream advisory committee meetings. I'm not sure if you want to have that as part of our terms of reference because it's, I mean, we are open to live streaming, but if you have it in the term of reference that we will be live streamed and we're not, then it's, yes. Sorry, through you, Chair. Um, that component is included under the procedural bylaw. We did include a live streaming section which says that all, all council and committee meetings will be live streamed. Um, so we are just onboarding everybody at that. Uh, this is obviously your first meeting, so we're kind of in the middle of getting any, everybody on board, but that did change to be added in during the COVID realm when, um, I can't remember whatever bill uh, number it was, was instituted, so that's why we've now switched over to the live stream. And the event that public don't feel comfortable or safe coming in person, um, they can watch it or participate on Zoom um, that way as well. So that's that's it, you won't see it in there, but because you are governed by the procedural bylaw, that's where it's included. Got it. Is that satisfactory, Celia? Yeah. So all meetings are now hybrid meetings. Admit attendance, physical attendance, isn't necessary. Is that a correct statement, Madam Clerk, Deputy Clerk? Uh, through you, Chair. Yes, so the, including the advisory committees, um, Council is now operating under a, the hybrid model. I think we're in phase two right now, which is everybody that's a member or assign, um, uh, here to make a presentation or speak is invited in person. And once we get to phase three, which is the final phase, that would be p the public coming in to sit and watch if they wished um, and kind of back to normal, but still including the electronic element, uh, which will be always going forward now. That's not to say, sorry, um, obviously you'd still have the ability to move into closed session, to stop the streaming, or to talk about things that maybe um, fall under the act that need to be discussed and closed um, as well. Okay. Uh, through you, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, is there a protocol to stop the live streaming, is to stop the live streaming in the event that uh, we're doing, say, a brainstorming se uh, session? Over. I don't know. Is there a protocol uh, to stop the live streaming in the event that it is needed for something? So through your chair, um, breaks, it's stopped. Closed session, the live stream is stopped. Um, if something happens procedurally or there's an issue with technical stuff, it, the live stream might not go through. So obviously we have a clause that says, you know, just like anybody else in the world, technical issues may happen and it might not be live streamed because we missed it one meeting or the Wi-Fi was down or whatever. But yeah, if you were to take a break right now, um, we would stop the live stream or if something happened in here and we needed to go to a break, it would just be turned off. Is that something that we actually need to vote on for to, to meet the protocol? I'm, I'm not too sure, um, like if you were moving into a break, you, you would just say, you know, if someone said I just would like a recess if we can break for five minutes, you don't need to vote on that. We just, the chair, if the chair agrees, we'd call a recess and, I, and we would just stop the live stream, just like we do in council. Okay. Any further changes, amendments? Sylvia? 
So just further to that, I guess my comment to the clerk, we should probably arrange a training session to talk about, because sometimes when the discussion goes around an informal table, we do identify you know, businesses that are doing it right, um, opportunities maybe for, for other uh, streetscapes or businesses or, or things that are identifiable individuals, and we just need to know that you know, we are being live, live streamed, everybody is watching what, could be watching what we're doing, and um, we just need to make sure that we're not uh, you know, saying things that we might not say. Sorry, through you, Chair, absolutely. There would be moments of, um, under the Act, there are certain things, you know, identifiable individuals, security of the property, legal information, um, and we absolutely don't want to, you know, sh talk about one business over another or maybe who's doing this and who could be doing better. Absolutely, exactly what Deputy Mayor Bray said, those would be opportunities where if there was a need to go into, um, if there was a need to discuss that, you would need to move into closed session, uh, which is absolutely fine. We just want to make sure that we identify that wherever we can uh, on the agendas. We can always add it at the table, but I mean, if, if you know there's something that, if Caitlin knows there's something coming on the agenda that maybe you guys will need to discuss more um, thoroughly or identifiably, <laughs> then we can put that on the agenda. That way the public knows. Okay. Pretty good. Any further Amendments? Then I would like to, I need a motion that the, um, the advisory committee of, on tourism receives the, um, receives the draft amended terms of reference along with the amendments um, uh, identified in this meeting uh, to be presented to council through um, Caitlin Mosma. Do I have someone that would, is, there, is that motion acceptable? Yep. As is? Do I have someone that would make that motion? <coughs> oh. Caitlin? Oh. I'll make the motion. Yep. Okay. We have a second? Second? I can second that. I do. Yep. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, item 7-2, Economic Development Officer Update. We'll pass the floor over to uh, Caitlin Monsma. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think I'm going to share the screen for my staff report because there's a couple of visuals within it. Um, so just give me a moment to do that. Okay, so this is the staff report that I added to the agenda for today's meeting. Um, so I put together this report to update you all on related projects that staff have recently completed or that we're working on just to catch you up um, as we restart this committee. Uh, so by providing you with information on these projects, I'm just hoping to help the conversation um, for, at this table. So the first project I'll start with is the town branding. So a large project that uh, we have been working on since it was the beginning of winter last year is the new corporate branding. So it's now complete and it was approved by council at the end of June. So staff are now completing uh, the final steps for launching that branding. Um, and so it'll occur at early September, and so the launch is going to include new banners, billboard, news release, flag grazing, and the new branding. So the new branding is going to help redefine the corporate image of the community, um, and it's going to work along with the Tourism Sparkle brand. So the tourism brand will be used for all tourism communication, whereas this new branding will be used uh, for all other town communication. So it'll be just the two brands living uh, for, for the town. Um, my next item here is the tourism website and social media. So in the past few months, we've developed the tourism website. Um, so we've included more content and updated the imagery on there. 
Um, the website is definitely an ongoing project. Our current platform's very difficult to use, but so we're, we're getting there. Um, so we're, I'm working on it as time permits and just including content where I can. We have now have content for all four seasons on there. Um, and then between myself and the summer student that we had this summer, we also completed a social media schedule um, for the tourism social media pages. And so it includes weekly posts that highlight um, like the different events that are happening in the community, um, different activities um, that we highlight and business features of the week. So we highlight tourism businesses on, on those pages. Um, within the report, I've also provided links to the website, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So please check those out and give me any feedback you have for them. Um, let me scroll down here. So um, we have, we're also been developing a tourism guide. So that's something that uh, we've been working on throughout the summer and it's going to be a four season activity guide with the goal to encourage year round visitors. Um, it's going to like highlight activities that can be found in Wasega Beach for locals and visitors. So currently we've written the copy for it, so all the content that's going to go in it and we've also um, found accompanying photos to go in it. So now I'm just looking for a graphic designer. So we're gonna go to RFP or quote for that. And I'm planning to launch the guide at, in late fall of 2022. And that guide will be able to be used all year round because it'll be four seasons. Um, a project that we completed last uh, fall was the 140 Main Street mural. So this was a placemaking initiative. Um, we commissioned an artist to paint the empty wall at the archives building at 140 Main Street. Uh, the wall is, it's really visible from multiple vantage points in the downtown area, especially from Main Street Bridge, which is why that location was chosen. Um, and we went through a full call for artists to find the artist, which in the end was Future Day. So they're a group from Collingwood and they painted the wall for us. So the mural includes summer and winter scenes, it includes the backdrop of the sun, multiple activities through silhouettes, so like popular activities in the community. And then it also has um, like bubbles on the wall that have little features of historical imagery like, uh, like the Nancy. So this was a, this was a good place making project for, for the area. And I have a photo up there of it. Yep. Keelan, um, do you want us to wait till the end of your presentation to ask questions or? No, please ask questions as I go. If anything comes up, we can definitely do questions <laughs> as we go. This is probably a, ri a ridiculous <laughs> question, but is that wall still going to be there after development? I mean, we, we're tearing down stuff and building stuff right now. And is that, is that wall going to remain? So I can't say it will remain forever, right? But I think it like um, we don't have plans for when it will be demolished. So I just, it was a good place making project for the building as it stands. Yeah. Because that would be, that would be disappointing that if uh, we, we put something as beautiful as that only to find out within, within two years, it's, uh, it's gone. Sorry. Um, our archives have moved into the building that the, uh, mural is on so certainly there's a you know short to medium term plan that that building will remain active there is no development proposal at this point for the parking lot beside it and or the archives which is owned by the town so any other questions about any items before i go on to the next okay so um Another large project that we took on during the pandemic was the comprehensive wayfinding strategy. And I'll scroll down here. Uh, so it was approved by council in July of 2021. Um, so the wayfinding strategy was developed to map out uh, detailed locations for 
all required and recommended wayfinding throughout the community. So that's like directional signage, placemaking signage, um, uh, gateway signage. Um, and the, so in the strategy, it also included like the messaging plans for those signs. So what destinations we include on the signs, uh, the directions and the directions on them, as well as icons. Uh, it includes circulation studies for the tourism traffic in the community uh, and the types of signs that we're going to use. So uh, all our directional signs come from the RTO7 um, signage standards. And then we also have our custom signs that are unique to the community. Um, so perhaps I will just share the strategy here just in case. Some of you have not seen it before. I just have to switch my sharing screen. Give me one moment. Okay, so this is the wayfinding strategy here. So these are the RTO7 signs that we were that we identified that we'll use in our community for directional signs. And then this here is the custom signs that Entro Communications designed for us um, that will be used for town entry, um, destination signage, placemaking, uh, and um, like park signage. So, okay, well, what, are the, yeah. what is the timeline on these on, on these signs? Uh, are they are we going to be completed by say the end of next next year or? Is mm -hmm. it so we did the first phase of signs this spring. Um, so it's twelve signs, and then in the spring of twenty twenty three, we'll be installing the next phase, which is thirty five signs. Um, the goal is to have all signs installed within the next five years. And so I'm working with Public Works to budget for that goal. Yeah. Oh. Caitlin, there's a trail map at the Oakview Woods Gazebo. So I know I've reached out to Public Works because the Healthy Community Network has considered updating as part of um, a, a project for this year. Would that that should fall under these guidelines. Mm -hmm. Should that fall under your department rather than public works? Or do you work close enough together that we don't need to worry about it, we just need to? Yeah, so I have talked to um, Matt on health, so Matt the planner, he's on the committee for healthy networks and I think that's where the initiative came out of. So. I'm working with him to try to update it to this new standard instead of just updating the map that's on it. So, yeah, <laughs> no, no worries. Okay. So, let me find where I am here. So yeah, I just really wanted to read that uh, special consideration was given to the designs of the custom made signs. Um, and the colors that were used um, were selected from the Wasega Beach Tourism Sparkle brand. So we used that tourism brand to create these signs. Um, the consultants recommended to not limit the sign designs to the brand colors um, because, like, in, instead use a version of it because when we just had the tourism colors on them, they looked very primary, very, very, like, colorful and just by adding a few extra shades we were able to just make them more sophisticated. Um, so yeah in July of 22 the first phase was implemented and was complete um, so that was 11th signs <laughs> and then the second phase of signs are going to go to RFP this fall and be installed in the spring as I was saying so that's 35 signs and I'll go back to my report here. Oops. 
So that's one of the signs. They are actually installed out near Boston Pizza. Um, and so a recommendation that came from the Wayfinding Strategy was this place making with Sega sign. So in June of 2022, the town installed the place making sign at Beach Area 1. So um, overall, I think the sign has been well received from visitors and residents. And um, when I'm managing our social media pages, it's really exciting to see the number of posts uh, that visitors have with the sign in it. Okay. So then on to the next item, which is the visitor center information. So the visitor center still remains at Nancy Island Welcome Center and it's operating at full employment capacity following the pandemic. So during the pandemic, um, they got cut on staff like most places did, but now they're back up to full employment, which is great. And so they have their operating hours 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day and this will go until September 5th. At that point, they may um, reduce their number, their hours, um, and I can provide an update when that happens. And I just stay in communication with Ontario Parks employees at the Visitor Center just to ensure all the material that they're handing out is up to date and they have it stocked up where we can. Yeah, so the Ontario Parks definitely, like I follow them for updates on beach capacity, like updates, and then where I, where we can, we share it onto our social media pages. Um, but that's about it, so. One thing that I think would be very helpful for visitors um, is the parking situation. If a parking lot was to become full, it might be nice that people could go to a site on their phone to say, okay, don't even bother trying to go there. I know we had a couple situations this summer where people were driving around in circles, traffic was crazily congested. They were still trying to get to areas that they had no hope of getting parking in. No, I think that's a great idea. It's definitely something we can explore, whether it's like a map and we can make the parking lots red on like, especially long weekends, right? And then we can... Or even if we could just have um, signage as you're driving, something that you're going to drive by, and just have on that signage, you know, just like a motel sign, you know, this, these are the area of parking that you're going towards. Unfortunately, these ones are already full. That's what I, I guess that's how I'm feeling too. I got caught in one of those oh, traffic jams. Yeah, I, I saw it I several went. times and people were so upset to yeah. drive up here for hours only to find that where they want to go they can't go, then they don't know where they can go. Right. I went to Beachwood Hotel. Yeah. 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 I went to Beach One to watch the sunset and um, I, I didn't get home until quarter to 11. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, no, that would be helpful because all the parking lots are so spread apart, right? So just to go to one air, one spot to find out where there is parking. Mm -hmm. So we'll move to Blue Flag 2022. So this is just a quick one. Was like Beach was successful in our 22, 2022 application uh, for Beach Area once again. Um, I'll scroll down here. Um, our 
next items, the facade improvement program. So I just included this on my report because it's a great program for the beautification of our community. Uh, so the facade improvement program was marketed since January 25th of this year. So I did a little marketing campaign for it and it def I have seen a raised interest in the program. So to date, the department, I've held five pre-application consultations and I've received three applications this year. So one has been approved by council and then two are gonna be brought to council in September for approval. Um, my next section here is events and festivals. So ECDEV assists the events divisions with events and festivals as needed and occasionally takes lead on like the smaller promotional events as, as needed. Um, recent town summer events from the events department include summer sets, beachfront summer kickoff, with Sega Sundays, waterfront festival, trail tunes, jazz in the park, et cetera. Um, so what I would like to do is invite the events department to our next meeting to provide an overview of those events. Um, we've included a new rep in the draft terms of reference the senior events coordinator. So it would be great to get her, have her presence at the meeting so that we can start talking about how to grow our event, the events in the community um, to have more focus on tourism. And going down, uh, we have the video and image development with RTO7. So, um, We, over the last year and a bit, we received funding from RTO7 um, for three projects to develop video and photo collateral for the community. So through the program, the town's been able to capture photos um, of various winter, summer, and fall activities. Um, in addition, the program's also provided us with promotional videos for the summer and winter. We have not yet had fall, so that's something that I'd like to do this year. Um, so what we do with these images and videos is we use them on our tourism website, we use them in marketing campaigns. I'm gonna be using them in the tourism guide. Um, and then the videos are used on our marketing campaigns as well. So in the fall, the fall shoot took place in September and October of 2020. So it's been a couple years since that. Uh, the images have been used in like various advertisements to help promote the fall season. Um, but at that time, there was no videography taken. So this year I'd like to capture fall footage. Um, and then the winter took place in January and February of this year, and the master video launch will launch to the public this fall. So we haven't shown that yet because it was captured that towards the end of the winter. And the summer shoot took place in June of this year, and so I sent the master video to this group um, when it launched on our Facebook page. And we've also launched the two shorter videos as well. So I'm on my last, I feel like I've been talking a while, but I'm on my last section here. So we've also have our tourism marketing campaign. So we launched a digital marketing campaign with Bell Media for the promotion of tourism within our community going through the summer season. Um, so the target markets were taken um, from the TDMP and I listed them in my report there. So they're directly from that, that report. And then the digital campaign also included demographics and psychographic characteristics also from the TDMP, um, such as like families, friends, those interested in exploring the area of Ontario through rec recreational activities, events, nature, and more. And the campaign started in late June and it'll wrap up Labor Day weekend. So that is my report and I will take any questions. Caitlin, are you able to play the video? It just, I think it's probably worth sharing. Just give me a couple minutes. Lord. 
Laura, how do you share the sound? Do you know? No. The video? Right in the summer. We're home to adventure and excitement. We are the place for patio living. We're home to fun and great food. We are where friends and family gather, making memories that last longer than tan lines. Great experience starts in Wasaga Beach. That concludes your presentation. Uh, just for clarification, that was uh, seven point two. Does that did you also include seven point three within that uh, that review? No, I'd like to discuss that separately when we. Okay, correct. so uh, we need a motion that the uh, advisory committee of tu on tourism receive the economic development uh, August update report, uh, dated August thirtieth, uh, twenty twenty-two, for information. Someone to motion, Sylvia. Second. Second. All in favor? Carried. Seven three. Uh, grant applications. Oh, okay, I'm perfect. Sorry. Uh, My item? Your item, perfect. I'm sorry, I should have uh, no. drum rolled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> No drum roll needed. Okay, so uh, we're preparing a grant application again for RTO 7's partnership program. Um, so this time we'd like to develop fall, fall promotion videos. So if we're successful, we'll be filming in late September. Um, we might not necessarily be able to use the videos this fall, but that's usually how it works with our short seasons. Um, so it would launch in the next year. Um, so the funding will provide us with two days of shooting and it will also provide us with one to like a one one to three minute master video and then two 15 second shorter videos uh, so I was looking for this committee for some ideas on what to feature like some more unique um, like maybe locations in the community um, Currently, the activities that I have planned for the shoot, and this is just like preliminary, um, like I was gonna do some paddling on the Wasaga with all the fall leaves behind, behind the models. Um, I was going to go to the lookout at Oxbow Dunes with all the fall leaves there, and then also Monument Hill um, with them walking on the, the sandy dunes there with, with the, the escarpment in the back. So um, I just thought there might be some discussion at the table on some some ideas to feature in that video. Opening it to the floor for recommendations that we might have. Um, maybe I'll start. I've got the mic on. Um, definitely, the, I assume that you want it to be in the same spirit as the previous video for for, for branding continuity. 
Yeah, that's correct. Um, definitely love the idea of the river I'd written. Uh, biking, hiking, something that maybe felt cottagey uh, because there's a lot of people come up and stay in our, in our community and, and, and see it as being a cottage environment. Um, Go-karts, paintball, skydiving. I would put all that in the... Um, Mm -hmm. in that in that same category that is you know maybe a little bit more you know it's it's summer as well but it's it's it starts to become a little bit you know when the when the weather starts to become a little cooler uh the other big ad, ad i might like big maybe a question is is have we covered french translation on this oh. uh no we haven't so um, it's something that we've considered because I know we have a big market in the in Quebec. Absolutely. So it's definitely something to consider. I don't know if RTO7 covers that for the funding, so it's certainly something I'll look into. We have a... When, when I look at the Quebec market that comes here, um, they come here for more than more than a weekend, and they seem to from my perspective, spend a lot of money. From a, you know, from a business perspective, do you see the same thing, uh, uh, Wendy, Sylvia? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that we need to be uh, aware of anything that we communicate that a big part of our market is Quebec. And it doesn't take much, but if they, uh, you know, if, if you look at what we, that last video, it's, you can have a voiceover on that that mm -hmm. is that is uh, uh, that is French. You know, if you're looking for someone that can do it, I I've got some contacts. But it's a uh, it's a um, you know it would not take much to take that and and uh, and turn it into something that would be really accepted in Quebec. Yeah, you, you're completely right. So we develop these videos through our TO7. So I will I'll definitely consult with them on how we can get that voiceover on those videos. Yeah. That's great. Um, I know in uh, most tourism uh, advertising, there's always people on bicycles in, in pathways, but everyone has that. But we have a great bicycle path down in our town now. Maybe a, a, an idea would be having a bunch of old cars, because we do have the old car shows, driving along the road with people and their children actually on the road, riding their bike with lots of room. I think that's a lot important to people. Um, and maybe just um, showcase that they can rent bikes and rent kayaks here so that they don't feel, well, you know, I can't bring my bike, I can't get a kayak. It's nice to know you can go to a town and have all of that available to you. Um, events such as the Hoot Nanny, so a good fall event, uh, the fall fruit stands, or the farmers market if it's still going when the, the shoot's happening. Um, I think those were my two. Uh, so for me, I know you said stand up paddle boarding, but I know that they have the Halloween Witch Fest stand up paddle boarding, which is pretty special. So uh, back to river. And the other thing is fishing, and with the uh, salmon season, I guess, being here. Salmon's a fall fish, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and something with dogs, like the dog beach or the hiking or just animals tend to make for good video. Is that enough insight, uh, Caitlin? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Right. So uh, I'm going to take these ideas, but another thing we kind of struggle with when we're doing these photo shoots, video shoots, is getting models and businesses um, to participate in them because it's a lot of volunteer time because we don't have the budget to actually pay for models, so we find volunteers. Um, so if you have any ideas on where I can find people to feature in these videos, just send them my way, like just send it through email. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
No motions required on that. Um, on to 7-4, budget and work plan. Caitlin, do you want to take part of this or do you want me to open it up on discussion or do, what, how would you want to proceed on this? No, you can open it up for discussion. Okay. Yeah. Um, this part of the meeting is going to be far more open, open form. Um, we have a budget of uh, $1,500 that, uh, uh, that is there for us to use. Uh, we have uh, basically two months to, to use it if we see a, an appropriate place to, to use it. Uh, I th I'd also like to open it up for discussion on uh, any ideas that we might be able to consider uh, or provide recommendation to council on, on activities that should be looked at. Uh, a big part of where we want to go as a committee is, 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 is sending information, not only receiving information and providing assistance, but delivering information to uh, town and council that could be considered. Uh, keeping in mind our role is, is, uh, is not steering, it's advisory. We provide information and uh, if it's used, then um, uh, that's, that's good. If not, we're not offended by it, but at least our voice is being heard through this committee. So uh, with that, I mean, I have a couple of ideas, but I'll open it up to the table first to see if there's anyone that has any specific ideas uh, related to, uh, to either uh, committee initiatives or uh, uh, budget opportunities that we could uh, take advantage of in the next two months. Yeah. Wendy? Um, I love your idea of the paddle boards going down the river dressed as witches or skeletons or whatever for Halloween and I think that could be something that you could really grow year to year so that you s at some point hundreds could be going down the river like how fun would that be maybe some of this money could be used as uh, prize money for the best costume or get Having, something started I, I and, and what you you you've hit upon too is is I think that events any kind of you know we, we're you know something an event that we can take ownership of and uh, to uh, to you know to have fun with it. Uh, and we have this beautiful on. river, I know. I, I don't think you really see too much like that. And in a way, with our signage, that's almost like a, a Mexican theme, that sort of signage. And maybe they do that, you know, the Walk of the Dead down there. And I think it'd just be really fun to start something like that, wouldn't it? No, I don't think anybody else in Ontario has anything like that. They had a witch, they tried a witch walk and a ghost walk, but it never really came through. One thing we'd have to be one thing we'd have to be careful of is, is boat traffic. Well, you'd have it's, to maybe say that, you know, it would be, and uh, it, it, you're in costume it could and you're be falling the walking, off the you'd have to It, it could be the walking dead if we're not. Are, yeah, <laughs> but I think it'd be fun. Anyway. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, Caitlin's going to be, uh, you know, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll take a few of these ideas right now and, uh, and then we can review them at, uh, Re review them after they all come through. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So I'm going to record all the ideas, and then I think I'll put them up on the board once once the ideas die out, and then we're going to pick our like top initiatives that we believe that we can accomplish. Anything else from the table, Sylvia? Oh, I just wonder if we could do something with the new brand, somehow expand the the banner, the launch, the, I don't know what, but something around the new brand. Something around the brand, uh, to, uh, it, it mean, cr to create a launch of the brand, or? Uh, when we first started, we really struggled with the Spark brand uh, at this level, trying to roll it out, and mm -hmm. I think eventually we realized, okay, as an advisory committee, we can't, we haven't you know, mm -hmm. an insignificant budget to do something grand. Uh, but the town is now rolling out the corporate brand, which ties into the tourism brand, and I'm wondering if we can somehow support that with, with manpower, with whatever, right? Like, I just, I don't know, there might be something when those banners go up, maybe we have a banner launching party. <laughs> um. Yeah, and it would be good to give some more thought at the committee's table on how we'd like to continue to use the tourism branding as we now we now we have this 
this focused corporate brand where all the departments are going to follow this corporate one. But between us, like the tourism committee and events, we're going to be the only ones using the tourism branding. So maybe just like thinking about how we'd like to to put it into the community even further than it has been. That could be a good report for our uh, for our, our next meeting is to because there's been ch there's been changes to how the brand is being approached since we last met, and to have a um, uh, to bring forward for new business for next meeting to have uh, something about about the brand and how it's being applied, and then I think that might also give us opportunity to see how it can be uh, how it can be launched and how it can be dovetailed into what's happening with the the corporate brand as well so yeah i can provide that okay. for the committee perfect thank you um i'll put down i've got a couple of ideas uh this is my recommendation is that we have a resolution to going to council to create a multi-stakeholder beautification task force or committee. Um, I often feel, uh, you know, going into the May long weekend, I, I'll drive around town and sometimes I'll look, at, I look and I think, boy, we're not putting our best foot forward in every single case. We have a, a, a natural, be natural beautiful beach, but in some cases, we're not necessarily always as beautiful as we could be. And um, I would like to see a, um, a task force or a committee with multi-stakeholders, with town staff, multi-departmental, Ontario parks, and volunteers from the community. Um, with the idea that we would be preparing the town for the tourist season in the spring and maintain a watchful eye so that Wasega Beach is continuously presenting itself at its best create a short-term strategy plan that will make our community ready for the tourist season. So that come May long weekend, uh, we are polished and ready to receive guests. Um, my wife's family would always say, if it wasn't for company, nothing would ever get done. And um, I sometimes feel as if um, we're not always polishing our, our community the way it could be in advance of the, of the tourism season. I would also see, like, like us to see, I, I develop a long-term strategy as part of the Wasega Beach brand uh, project that develops an overall look for our community, both from a housing standpoint and from you know, and how we want us to look from top to bottom, and that that becomes part of the beautification strategy. I'd like us to provide a reporting hotline. Uh, some type of a reporting system, whether it be a, a, a phone hotline or, uh, or, or something online to identify beautification issues around Wasiga Beach. Very often, um, it, people that work here don't necessarily see all the, the nooks and crannies of the community where there might be a problem. And a phone call or a, you know, having concerned eyes around the community can sometimes say, hey, you've got, you've got a problem over here. And so now we become the eyes uh, as stakeholders. Um, from this hotline, issues can be forwarded to various stakeholders for resolution. Issues are being sent monthly to the task force or our committee for, for discussion so that we can see where things are going. Key tourist areas become the priority focus of the project and will be supported by city standards and by law enforcement if needed. Uh, town, Ontario parks, town volunteers, because I have to believe that if we had a, 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 a committee like this, that there would be an army of volunteers that would love to get behind something like this. Uh, with the objective of making Wasega Beach one of the most beautiful or the most beautiful beach in Ontario. Uh, it also creates a, a rally cry for everybody in the community to, um, uh, to get behind and to, uh, to make us uh, proud of our community. So I would put that as a potential, as a potential item to bring forward. Uh, I have one more. 
let's uh, continue on. Recently on uh, MSN, uh, I saw an article from uh, Reader's Digest Canada. It announced the best beaches in Canada. It is, as, it, is the, it is the best beaches in Canada as voted by you. And there was 20 of them. Where do you think Wasega Beach ranked on the 20? It wasn't there. It wasn't even on the list. Um, it made me cry. Um, and yet there were seven beaches in Ontario on that list, and we didn't even make it uh, to the top one in Ontario. There are many, many you know, different things like this, and I've seen Wasaga Beach on there for different things. I saw one recently where Wasaga Beach was rated the number one party beach in Ontario. <laughs> I don't necessarily, that's not the one we necessarily want to have, but they're probably not wrong either. Uh, but I, I think it's almost dovetailed in with the beautification strategy. It would be great um, to have a, a strategy for us to achieve being the best beach in Ontario. Uh, and, and that we take control over understanding where we stand on that. Um, my recommendation would be to take $1,500 and invest it towards an annual tracking study, quantitative research through a third party that would ask the question, uh, you know, an Ontario-wide uh, study, where is the best beach, in, uh, what, what is the most beautiful beach, and what is the best beach in Ontario? And, uh, and then we would be able to track that annually to see where we stand, where we rank, and, and, uh, and then the information gives us feedback as to how we're, we're, how we're measuring up against our expectations year over year. And the information can also be used if it's through a third party, um, uh, third party source, it can be used in our, in our promotions. Voted number one beach in Ontario. Voted most beautiful beach in Ontario. If, if we come across as being number six or number 10, we won't use it, but it gives us a, a, a it gives us an annual tracking study to be able to, to, uh, to see how well we're doing against our metrics. Any further thought on that? Yep, Tilly. Thank you. So things like uh, voting opportunities for the best beach, they are not typically scientific studies. They're um, anyone with a business knows Simcoe Dot com right now has the Reader's Choice Awards. Mm -hmm. So anyone can nominate anybody in any category and they just create a new category. Um, you know, I think we got nominated in six this year. It was four last year and it was one 10 years ago. So I think it's being seen as a, you know, in the case of the newspaper, it's an advertising generator. So they in want case, to, yeah. you know, make it bigger and better. So I think if you see something that says, what's your favorite beach? If we can kind of start to funnel those things through Caitlin and it hits her radar, it's something, you know, through Caitlin, through Jenny, through the Chamber of Commerce, we can reach out to the community and say, hey, vote for your best beach. Because if we don't know there's a contest or a, um, a study being taken, we can't participate. Um, this is not a study. This is market research. So market research would be a quantitative research study that would be con conducted by a third party that would not be come in and vote. It would be... It would be... Uh, and that was, sorry, that was the McLean's one? No, I would not. Uh, this would be our own. Our right, own okay. So I, I see them as two very different things? Very much. Okay. But anyways, so my, my comment was more to the McLean's one, is when you see an opportunity, whether it's Google or Yelp or um, TripAdvisor... We populate it. Let's populate it. Let's... Um, Apple Maps, for exactly. example, takes their ratings for a business from Yelp. I don't know anybody who uses Yelp. I have like five or six reviews after 20 years. Uh, but Google, everybody's on Google every day Trip advisor. the week. We don't, even, we don't even score well on TripAdvisor. Yeah. But maybe we could, and maybe that's part of so the strategy. So there's an objective is right to there, is to, is to populate uh, consumer ranking, uh, uh, consumer ranking uh, engines or, or studies. Well, and from economic development, maybe it's a bookmark that you can provide to businesses that says, hey, if you're happy with your service, um, because when you've had that 
connection with a customer, whether it's real estate, whether it's um, you know a food establishment, you can hand it out and say, hey, um, you know, if you have a few minutes, give us a give us a review. We'd really appreciate it. And I think we can actively seek reviews from happy customers because we bump into them every single day, whether it's at the beach, um, big time, you know, the bar, wherever. There, there's a ton of people that really love Wasaga Beach. It would be great. Yeah, that's a, that's a great initiative to to say every single opportunity is that we can populate um, uh, reviews. We should be doing it. But I, I guess I'm looking at something that would be an independent research study that would be quantitative and more more factual than than these ones. Um, I have to also use the. To, no, you don't have to. Gary can. Gary can take over at some point. So, well, since Chris is leaving the room, <laughs> go on. Here, we'll go to intermission. If that's okay.
repeat uh, what we've listed so far as um, uh, either budget or uh, committee initiatives that we could consider for now or for going forward or recommendations to council yes so our first item was event so Halloween a Halloween event on the river so having our like visitors dressed up in the river like some sort of witch event um, item two was the tourism branding report so I'm going to be reporting back to committee on that just uh, what our branding strategy is here at the in the community so that the committee is aware of it um, the third item is assist in the tourism or corporate branding launch and then number four is advisory committee on beautification or beautification task force item five was populate consumer related surveys and item six is market research through a third party source can I have a seventh and this one I think after discussion you, you, you may uh, decide to push it down but uh, um, after after the weekend that we just came through I would like to uh, give a consideration to um, restructuring or developing a new H2OI task force um, it's one of the, I don't even have to look up, I can feel eyes rolling because it's, it's, it's an interesting subject because as much as this group comes in and, and, cause, and disrupts the community, it, it probably goes on record as being one of our largest uh, uh, tourism activities that comes into our community. Um, I, would, I would love to see if there's a way that we could restructure our group to work with this group somehow because I know right now they don't want to speak with us but they are there is an organization connected to it um, for about 40 years I have had had a boat in um, in uh, Port Dover and so I'm familiar with Friday the 13th and Friday the 13th if if I if someone made a suggestion we're gonna have a motorcycle rally up here that's going to be involved motorcycles including in, in, to a, a very visible uh, in a vis visible way Hell's Angels and every other group that you can imagine there might be a, a, a feeling of fear and I think there's it would be justified but from what I've seen out of Friday the 13th in Port Dover is that it is that the logistics of the event has been organized it's tied in with the police. The police do not take a lot of activity, but they certainly that there. But there's there's flow as to how vehicles come into the community, which vehicles can come into it. There's parking on the outside. Um, there's organization. Uh, the service groups, uh, Lions Club, Rotary, they're involved in, in big ways, and, and and they make a lot of money through Friday the 13th. I have to believe there's a way that we can capitalize since we have been chosen by H2OI to be a community that they want to come to, is there a way that we can somehow um, somehow break through where, you know, and, and I don't want to get into details, but it could be an example. You know, using the uh, Edenville Airport sections of that, having, uh, you know, camping out there, uh, uh, if they have an area that they could use uh, for burnouts, we... Uh, designate um, uh, flow through the community uh, with pylons and with restrictions on, on, on one-way traffic going through the community so they would have a cruise night um, I've read the I've read the H2I website and their position is very much that they want to be a car enthusiast group and they've they've even identify in their website that Lately, there are some uh, troublemakers that are causing issues, and they don't want to be known for that. So, can we take control with the assistance of H2I to, to make, to take advantage of the tourism dollars and make uh, Wasega Beach a place that can maybe benefit from it? Uh, Sylvia. Uh, there, there certainly is a town release yesterday about H2OI. 
um, at this point it's an unsanctioned event there have been efforts uh, to reach out and ask them to come in let's talk about a special event let's get this organized let's do it right in the past we've had motorcycle rallies that have attracted 15,000 people they've been really well run they've been really well managed everybody comes has a good time goes home safely this group is very different if you work as the town does very closely with the OPP um, they're they're not welcome in most communities because they have no respect for the community so until they're ready to kind of come to the table and talk, it's very hard to welcome them to your town. Because I, ultimately we're responsible for the safety as you know, working with the OPP for the safety of our town. But if you're not coming to the table, it's really hard to want to welcome you. It's, it feels as if it's an organization that we need to somehow connect with. Um, if we ignore it, it becomes, you know, it becomes a war zone every single time, every single time, and and yet there are parts of that. If you if you drive around, you see the community. There's there's there are parking lots full of people that are just like a typical car rally with the hoods up and they're looking at their vehicles and they're revving it. They've got the stereo going, but it's it, it there's there's a group that are not not like that, and uh, I believe that there's a collective experience between what. We know of Friday the 13th and other uh, H2I rallies in the U.S. where they've had problems too, um, but uh, there needs to be there needs to be something done because right now it's it's dangerous the way it is right now. And I'm just I, I guess I put it out there as you know, it, you know, is there? It, it's obviously a tourism tourism opportunity in a big way. Wendy, you were close to the action there. Were you scared, or did you get business? I got a lot of business. I wasn't scared, and I literally... No, no, no. Um, I, it didn't scare me. Oh. Um, I literally was right in front of um, a car that did, like, these wheel, yep. like, you know, like, six in a row. It was like, and everyone was, like, amazed at this guy's driving ability, which was, like, a little, you know, oh, that's weird. And um, unfortunately, I also witnessed tons of kids... Um, circle a police car and start rocking it back Big and time. forth. I witnessed that, which was a little unnerving. Um, but um, I think the police handled it amazingly this year. Um, they they just handled it. And I don't know that it's like what Sylvia said, if they're not really to sit down with us and try to do anything, then what can really re we really do, even though it is a tourism event, the police, I believe, know what's happening, and um, they had drones in the air. They know where everybody's set up, and I think it's very spontaneous for them to be in the location where they're going to do whatever. Mm -hmm. That's a big part of what they're... And so I don't know that you can really plan for that unless we can work with them. But um, like I said, I think the police uh, did an amazing job with them. Because you know what? They seem like, they don't seem like hoodlum kids. Like no. you can see them dressed and, and they just seem like nice, normal kids. And you know, <laughs> I don't know how you handle them. But when they get into that mob mentality, there's going to be some rogue people. And the police will just have to isolate them and punish them and let everybody else sort of go home back to their parents. I don't, I don't know what else you, how you deal with that. Yeah, so, so I think I, I agree with you, Chris, that it's a tourism opportunity and what would be, I didn't know that they're sort of not wanting to work with the town on a special event, but maybe if we had a set of like engagement rules for any car rally, right? Because on the other hand, we're talking about actually using uh, antique cars, right? Um, they're also like, a, from my point of view, they're a different car still a car enthusiast uh, society, right? So if the rules of engagement were sort of really easy, um, and at least that could be laid out as a framework, would that be a step? It, it, the, the difficulty, from what I've read on the whole subject, the difficulty is, is that almost by nature, they like to be a little rogue. They like to be, a, a, you know, they like the spontaneous uh, uh, nature of, of, of their community, that they will, they will go along and then all of a sudden they're set up at Canadian Tire or they'll be over at Walmart. Uh, or they, they like this whole idea, hey, let's all pull in here. There's a handful that create you know, you know, 
mess, but. Uh, Right. It's, it's, I think you're, I, I don't have the answer to it. I just see, I, I guess I, I can't help ignore the, the opportunity of, of the volume of people for tourism and what it brings in for business. Uh, but um, I just, I would love to think that there might be a way to, re to remedy this and I don't have the answer. Gary. Well, Mr. Chairman, it sounds like you're suggesting that that we should invite them into the community. Is that is that what you're suggesting to control it better? I don't think the word is control. I think what we do is we host. I think there's a way. To, how how do we host? In the same way that how does Friday the Thirteenth host their you know three hundred thousand people it, that come that's into? A, that's a great idea, Mr. Chairman. But what what I'm suggesting. And, and what I'm seeing by looking at this organization, there's several cells with invo involved. So you have a group that, yes, they want to be spontaneous. That's, that's how they operate, that's their motive. But within that group, you've got you know, the other 30 people that are gonna do the spin outs and are gonna break the law. Not everyone in the group that's coming up with their car and lifting the hood and, and yep. listening to music, they're not breaking the law. That's, you know, to, to open your car up and turn your stereo on, that's not against the law. However, and Ken may want to speak to that, however, it is against the law to, you know, to do burnouts in the middle of the road and you know, almost run over people and mm -hmm. run police cars. So I in the event that we're gonna try to sp put some human resources and some energy into working with this organization, we really need to do our homework because mm -hmm. all, all we could do, if we don't do it correctly, we could, we could create more disaster and we don't want to do that. We, all, you know, we already, we don't know the bill yet so far from the weekend, but we, oh, it's a scare. you know, I wouldn't we, want to be in the council's shoes right now trying to, to, to deal with this. 190, 191 charges, according to the media, were laid by the OPP. How many will stick is beyond me. Uh, I'm sure many of them will be challenged in court. Um, maybe Ken, as a former police officer, can speak to that. Uh, well, it, it's a very difficult situation when you're dealing uh, with large groups like you're talking about. And uh, what you've got to uh, do is it's almost like an individual when you're, you know the law, but you may have to stretch it a bit. And that's what I think we're talking about here. And really, what you've got, to me, what you've got to do is get in with uh, this group at their meetings or whatever and see and talk to them so that they get to know the, pe the people like us here and you'll find that their uh, groups and committees are very, very strong on what they allow within their group. And you'll find that where you get these, uh, like these ones that got together and shook up the police car, okay? Police could have gotten very upset, but my understanding was they didn't. They were amazing. They were, they, they and cool. uh, so consequently, what you want to know is what group does that group belong to? And then you approach them and talk to them. And for example, um, my uh, uh, son-in-law is one of the big shots in Cruisers, Cruisers 11. And uh, they quite often have quite a few meetings and they discuss with different townships of what is going to go on. And that's what I think we really would have to do in this case. And uh, it, it, it is fortunate this year that the police did control everything a lot better than what it was anticipated. So 
I think they should be congratulated for doing a good job. Um, this rally was actually so um, hidden that at 9 o'clock at night, we still didn't believe it was coming. And then at 10 o'clock, it was like a flash mob. That's how quickly it happened. But if we wanted to um, work with these, uh, this H2O, um, the main purpose is just to make sure that everybody's safe and that no more cops are getting, uh, you know, the cop cars. But, you know, lots of cities around the world sort of have a Grand Prix set up and their whole town, they have the roads set up. We could offer them something like that, maybe have a, a circuit mm -hmm. around town and in the wide areas, we could put up safety fences and as cars go through the circuit, they can time it so that those cars can go into that safety area and do their burnouts and everybody can watch them. Maybe that might be an idea. Again, it comes down to logistics. Yes. I'll just read something briefly here that uh, I, I, off of their website. <clears throat> and it said that uh, many people consider 2014 to 19 the peak era of H2I, considering attendance, the community, location, organization. However, many attendees of H2I of 2020 would agree that the event has lost a sense of community and, long, uh, and, and being about cars and was much more about causing a scene above anything else. In the future, hopefully we'll learn from the, uh, our mistakes and create a better and more uh, successful event. That's their words. So maybe we can help. Caitlin, I'm sorry you've been trying to, trying to get in. No, that's okay. No, I just wanted to add in that, yes, this event's definitely a dangerous one for our community, and it's not acceptable the way it is. I think a first step we would want to take is to get a contact, as I heard some saying around the table, get a contact at H2OI to make those connections and see if they are interested in working with the community. Um, and then at that point, develop an, an H2OI committee that yeah. can work cooperatively versus mm -hmm. versus adversarially uh, yeah. work cooperatively to try and create uh, a place to have an event that mm -hmm. is better controlled yeah and they would need to work with our special events team to yes. to create an, a sanctioned event and ensure that our community has its safety yes Sylvia from the town's um, release yesterday so one of the final paragraphs people have asked why we simply don't close our municipal borders to rowdy car rally participants why we don't just turn their vehicles around we have been advised that this is not a legal option we've reached out to those associated with the car rally at different times in the past and asked that they follow our special events process to ensure a safe and fun gathering However, not once have we ever received a response. Again, I call on the Car Rally community to consider working with us an organized and safe gathering is possible here. Our community has a long history of welcoming visitors, hosting people as part of our fabric, but we do insist that everyone in Wasaga Beach follow the law. And we ask that people conduct themselves in a respectful manner. Anything less than that is not welcome. So, um, there certainly was a plan in place. You know, the, the OPP were as aware as their intel would allow them to be. Um, but when you get that mob mentality, things can go, wrong. can go wrong. And that's ultimately what we have an obligation to protect is the residents and the visitors of Wasaga Beach. Is there something, after all this discussion, Caitlin, is there something written down that we can possibly put our teeth into as, a, um, uh, as, as an item on our list? Oh. oh, I got it now. Um, so an item I'd suggest is to learn more about H2OI and to source a contact at, uh, at the organization to start conversation about a sanctioned event. And, and to develop a, a committee that can work cooperatively sure. with their organization to create a, a, a uh, to create a a, a safe mm -hmm. car rally. It's uh, see, it as a car rally versus a disruption. 
and see if we can move the disruption over to a to a, um, a paved pad over at the uh, Edenville Airport. One of the problems you have in these car rallies is one of the problems you have with these car rallies is it's from what my understanding is uh, from my son-in-law is that it's different groups of from, for example, this weekend was from Alliston, Newmarket, Barry, and local uh, Wasega cruisers, and that is where you're probably running into a problem in trying to get something organized. So what you might want to do is I can uh, work on my uh, son-in-law about possibly getting to talk to one of these groups so that we can find out where they're coming from. I think it's pretty clear. I think they're coming from everywhere and, and, and a lot, a lot yeah. contingent from Quebec. Yeah. But it's a, uh, but it's, I, I don't, we haven't been able to, we haven't been able to focus in on an organizer. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's just a, one of the things my uh, son-in-law was talking about was they had, uh, this weekend, there were some people up from Alliston uh, that were a separate club from another club at Alliston, and they were at each other's throats. So it might be worthwhile just to investigate what we can do as a group. I think once we, I think once we get to that stage, Ken, and we have a, a committee, they will be. I think that's. That, I, I, don't, I don't think we're suggesting that that would be our role. Okay. As, yeah, I don't see us as being our role. We're making a recommendation at this stage, unless we develop into a subcommittee. But I'll still talk to my son. I'll sure. see what, what I can get. Yep. He's uh, by the Any, way, he's, he's vice president of Winter's Eleven, so he's very well. He knows it. No, he. If he knows the vice president from uh, H2OI, then... <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything else added to the floor at this point? Okay, now... Uh, oh, hack it up. It's what? Yes, correct, not the cars. Yes. Okay, sorry, I just wanted to uh, add one quick comment when we were discussing the branding and the budget for the branding. So what I was thinking about is like with the beautiful new logo is creating some stickers for it and being able to give those away and distribute them. And that would be like, my neighbors are using like a, we are the beach sticker, which is from Toronto and it's like their big branding. So I always put that for them. And it's a sticker that can be are they using a sticker that is uh, adhesive, or is it uh, the kind that is cling vinyl that will go and not damage a vehicle? No. Yeah, it could be either. Yeah. Or further to that, um, maybe tattoos for uh, community events. You know, for all the kids at uh, Hoot Nanny, at um, Winter Funderland, at uh, so whether it's stickers for businesses, but it could probably be. Um, something for our arms team <laughs> team beach these are recommendations for the branding I, I assume that we're yes. looking at for yeah. yeah okay you got that yeah with res it's with respect to to using up our last fifteen hundred dollars is that the maximum we have uh, no I, I I've got to believe that the, that Stickers and things like that would come into a, a, a budget that's existing within the, the town. Yeah, so I, I, I believe we have, sorry for to interrupt. I believe we have an account that this would fall under. Mm -hmm. So if the recommendation does go through, then we would pull it from a different account versus the one for the committee. Yeah, versus us sourcing and budgeting and, uh, and acquiring. Mm -hmm. 
tattoos or stickers. I think mm -hmm. that I think these are. No. Good. I love them as recommendations, particularly stickers. All those stickers. The downside of stickers, as I've seen at ski resorts, is that some you you start giving out stickers, and next thing you know, they're everywhere, all over towers and and buildings, and and the maintenance crews working for days and days. Who put out these stickers anyway? <laughs> so, but I love them because they. It's, it's a, a form of, of branding and advertising that goes far reaching and gets out to a lot of different people. So, Any other ideas for um, uh, to be applied for discussion, for committee initiatives, or for budget? We have our list. Um, have you been posting the list? Or is, I was going to say, if we share the screen and we can maybe uh, as a final course of business, we take a look at that screen and, and see if there's anything on that screen that we want to either remove, change, or, or adopt. So if I may, I just highlighted number two because that I don't think we should include that. I think that's just going to be a report back from myself on the next agenda. So I will move that out. I miss what you just said. Uh, so, the, oh, here. Come on a second. So, the highlighted item, I believe Sylvia Bray brought it up in the meeting. Uh, it's going to be a tourism branding report for myself, just to explain the branding strategy. Oh. Yeah, here. I asked for that. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. So, I'll be bringing that to the next committee meeting. Perfect. So, that's a, that's a, that's a, um, a new business or future report. Yeah, report for information. Okay. Um, so the, the, uh, the event, would that be something that would be, um, uh, is that something that would be given to, uh, to council or to, as a recommendation to council or to your events committee here at, uh, at town? I'd like to know what action is going to be taking on these, uh, what actions is, is, is mm. being um, brought forward I, on this. I'd recommend that perhaps the committee could direct me to look more into an event such as this, and then I'll bring it back to our next committee meeting um, based off of my research and report, then the committee could make a re recommendation to council. Um, for the events department to take this. In, in the interest on. of time, it, I, if yeah. this is going to happen, it would have to. They would have oh, to put. Yeah. They would have to put wheels in motion within a week. Mm -hmm. um, if it's something that could we maybe just to expedite it, if this could go directly, to, uh, just as a recommendation to your events uh, events mm -hmm. group at uh, at the town, and that uh, they can either take action or not, Celia. Uh, so this event has happened the last couple of years. I believe it was an informal group that organized it. It's a shame Jenny's not here because she could probably provide input. But by putting it on this list, if we could ask Caitlin to report back to us next month with who's organizing it, what are they doing, do they need any support? Because I think this is happening with or without us. Our input might be that we can maybe help make it a little bit bigger and put music on the bank like uh, they did for um, the can't remember what it's called, but the paddle down the river, where there was different music stations, it was very, very well received. And you know, maybe we can somehow combine the two. But you could come forward with a, a report that supports that, um, so then we could react quickly to it next meeting. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we have a we we know how to action that uh, item number one. Yes, that's correct. Um, I will report back. Item number three, uh, action on that, is that something that would go to, do you have a specific department that you would uh, forward that recommendation to from our committee? Yep, yeah, so I will, I am working with our branding committee for the new branding, so I'll bring these ideas to them. I'll look at our budget as well and I'll report back to okay. the committee. And, and if we could also, with each of these, each of these seven items, when we go through it, when we designate what's going to happen at our next meeting, if we could report back and say, spoke to so-and-so, this is what happened. Yes, yeah, certainly. 
Sylvia, you had something to add? Well, just thinking that after your corporate or after your branding meeting, if there's a need for, you know, tattoos that say I'm a Wasaga Beach kid or I'm a proud Wasaga Beach, blah, 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 um, you know, when there's $500 missing in the budget, that could be a recommendation to this council too, or to this committee. Um, as, uh, item number three, um, assisting. I think that's a, almost a separate item is, is when, uh, when uh, Sylvia Bray made the recommendation on assisting in the branding launch, I think that where we left it was that um, is um, with subject to what happens with the corporate uh, with the corporate logo, what can be done to create uh, an overall branding launch strategy and uh, and looking for input on that is that is that a fair uh, is that a fair description yeah and I think if we start with Caitlin reporting back to where we are so this committee two and a half years ago was very active in um, how to launch the spark brand that happened through COVID thanks to the hard work of Caitlin and her department <laughs> of one <laughs> in a summer um, so I think we really need to know where we are because a lot has moved forward since we last sat here and talked about it. And then we can look to see, is there anything more we can do? Is there any advice we can give to Caitlin? Is there some low hanging fruit that would really push that brand out there? So, um, so yeah, I, I think the report will be so, a really good place to start. And then to number three, the beautification task force. I think that should be a discussion item on the next meeting because I don't, it's not a, a well-formulated idea at this point, but I think we need to fine-tune it as to what we all see it is, what it could include, and, and start to flesh that out to, to be able to move because it Because it's forward. not gonna happen immediately. So <laughs> I, I've, you can see that I've, I've, already put some, I've already put some work into that. Um, I can definitely, I, I, I could put together a framework for discussion, and then we build on that. Um, Caitlin, is, is, what is your suggestion on that? Unless you think that we are in a position to be able to uh, uh, solicit opinion from uh, the council on this, or are we premature? Uh, if I may, I'd say that we're premature on the discussion. I think we should definitely discuss it at, yeah. the, at the committee yeah. level. Sorry. And also being aware we've got seven to eight weeks of council remaining this term, and this committee will um, kind of disband at the end of the council term, and those interested can reapply uh, through the new council, and, uh, and then the, the committee gets started again, but they certainly work with the minutes and the notes and Caitlin for continuity, so. Yeah. <clears throat> Perfect, yeah, so what we can do is, is uh, in the interest of, of, of doing justice to that particular item, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll bring it forward for our next meeting. Uh, if we can everyone think about how the beautification project could work and uh, we'll, uh, we'll formulate it into, a, uh, into something that can be either carried on by this committee or, or by, the, by the other people that are sitting around this table. Um, <clears throat> populate consumer related surveys. I'm not sure if that's exactly, but it's a consumer. It's 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 definitely it's it's uh, a lot of online rating systems for 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 beaches. I'm not sure if we're that that's within our our strength to do that, or whether there's a a, a way to execute this particular item. If I may, I'd, I would recommend that this just be an ongoing item. So okay. as you see these surveys out in the public, just forward them to me. I can include them in the, the business newsletter we send out or on our social media platforms, just to encourage our community to participate in, in those, those surveys. Okay. Um, so that doesn't have to go for you. Gary? Just, uh, just to go backwards uh, for you, uh, Mr. Chairman, to, um, to Deputy Mayor uh, Bray, um, you, just that little last little comment about uh, the, the, you know, the, the eight weeks left in, in council and the uh, uh, possible disbanding of, uh, of the, this committee. Is it, is it provincially mandated or is it municipally mandated? I haven't looked at the, the uh, act, to be quite honest, to find out. 
are these committees mandatory with the new council coming up or can no. you speak to that? It's in, it's in our terms of reference. If you read through that, you'll see that basically uh, our jobs end the moment that the uh, that at the end of the uh, the term of the current council, and at which point it is uh, it's our our future is in consideration of uh, after the election. Right. So so just to, just to be clear, then so there's no obligation for the new council to create. A, another uh, uh, advisory uh, committee? No. No? Okay. Thank you. No. Um, <clears throat> market research. Uh, I still, of course, this is, this is the marketing person in me. It feels as if it's great to have annual benchmarks on certain metrics. And, and as Agatha pointed out, it, it's one of those things that was removed out of our uh, out of our um, uh, terms of reference. But I think to have um, an understanding of where we stand uh, against the population, how people see our beach and our community, would be of extremely valuable for the purpose of tourism. And that's the reason I, I put it up there. Sylvia. And for me, I think if we can come up with um, reasons that we believe something should happen. Caitlin will write a staff report, it will go to council, and at that point, if you know if the budget is $50,000 to make this market research happen, then those decisions can be made at that level. And if there's enough of an argument from um, you know, the people sitting at the table that have relevant experience, it'll happen. I could make this happen for $1,500. <laughs> Which, you know, which is irrelevant at this point because we probably won't be conducting it at this level. It will go through staff, yeah. um, you know, because Caitlin's here day in and day out. But the argument to support the need for is what the experience in this table brings to council. Those are seven but members of council. But they all have different backgrounds. I agree. So anything we can feed to them to support something we think our community needs is the strength of the advisory committee. Caitlin, if I could put that forward then as a recommendation to go to town uh, as a uh, re recommendation to have it as a to have it as a benchmarking annual benchmark study to uh, identifying best beach in Ontario, uh, most beautiful beach in Ontario. Those two questions, and uh, to have a quantitative research study conducted, uh, and it's not expensive. So, um, should I report back to this committee on this, the on findings, research on my findings, and then based on my findings, we can then make a recommendation to council. If it's fifteen hundred dollars, it's, it's within our our scope and our budget that we can do such a thing. Um, but it's it's, uh, and I think it's it's valuable information for us to understand how we are stacked up against, uh, you know. It's, it's very much, like, a, a lot of companies will ask the question, would you recommend to a friend? Uh, one simple question, it tells you a lot about how people perceive a brand. Yeah. Um, you know, when it comes to um, an article like uh, Ontario's Best Beach, maybe we just need to find somebody, a local reporter, to do something about our beach, take it to a Toronto paper, and then the headline is, Ontario's beautiful, like the most beautiful beach. It, you know, it's all, all these studies and headlines, you take them all with a grain of salt. So why don't we just create our own this headline? Is a, this is a different tool. Annual tracking studies are conducted to determine where markets are going. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's not a, it's, it's not a, it, this is not a, a newspaper article or magazine article. This is this is a uh, through ISPIS or some other co type of company that we right. go through and, 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 and ask two questions to a population of say 10,000 people. Yeah, I think sometimes though these surveys, you know, you might get somebody that thinks something one day and they change their mind the next day or where are they going and what's their demographics of people they ask. I don't know. I just think, do people it's, really? If you're in the business of, uh, when you're in the business of, of understanding how people are perceiving your your community, mm -hmm. and if and whether you are tracking better or worse, if this year we were number one and next year we're number ten, something's happening. Yeah. 
could our if, sales if, with and, our businesses and, and, and our we, numbers show and, us that? No, it's no? different. It's different. Oh. It's it's and then it's very specific to your business. If we if we're te if we're number ten this year, and then we do a beautification project, and in two years we get up to number one, it tells us something. Okay. It's it's. Anyways. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I think what I think what you're thinking is is great because you're you're actually talking about is sending a press release to a paper, whether it be print or, or or electronic, and it tells us what like what we think as opposed to what else what everyone else thinks. So we're ahead of the curb, right? Um, you know, it's no different. Like I'll, I'll use the Toronto Sun for, for as an example. Like it, it's it's you know as we know it's not the most popular paper anymore, but it was. When you open that up and there was all those stereo ads in there. It wasn't because you needed a stereo, it was because they were driving the market, mm -hmm. right? And what you're saying will work. And it's it, it's already happening um, now because you know the real estate is, is taking a bit of a hit. So now you're seeing if you open up, and matter of fact, if you open up the Toronto Sun or even the Globe, you'll go to this, in, this instant real estate market report that wasn't there two years ago. Gary, that's, I, what you're saying is accurate, but yeah. it has nothing to do with a market research study. A market research study is just that. If we need to step back, I think as a committee, we need to understand your definition of a market research study, see your sample questions, because for me, I liken it to an election poll when somebody phones me and says, who are you going to vote for for mayor? Well, three things will happen. A, I don't have a landline, so they're not reaching me, and probably 50% of my friends. So question the, the integrity of the data. Number two, depending on the order they ask the question, and then number three, depending on, you know, does my 22-year-old son answer the phone, and does my 89-year-old father answer the phone? So We're I think, talking now about the methodology of the study versus you put it in the hands of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a proper research company that will, will give us a, an annual tracking study. I don't want to but, but I think you need to educate this group before you just say, hey, I think we should do this. It's affordable. We should do it. Help us understand what, you, what it is, all of us, and then how we can do it. So I think, I think that maybe we need to learn the, the lingo before we say, hey, it's a great idea. Uh, my recommendation is, the, is to forward it on to, to, to the town. And forward this on to the town as a recommendation that we should, we should conduct an annual tracking study, a quantitative tracking study that will determine how we stack up year over year over year over year on the same two questions being asked. That will help us understand where we, st where we stand um, uh, year over year on a lot of this good work that we're doing. And I, if, if, there, if, there's, if, if there's marketers within that group, they'll understand what that is. Otherwise, yeah, I, have to, I could go through marketing 101 and explain how, you know, how a tracking study works. But I, my whole life was built around them. So that's, for me, it seems really simple. But it's, it's, that's because that was my job. <laughs> Could we? I'm not sure if we've done this, but to add to, I, I understand and support your um, mm -hmm. your initiative, but I don't know if this was done as looking the other way and seeing who are the demographics of the visitors to town. That's th and that's another study in itself. I think we do have inf we do have information on that. Um, there's been some uh, research conducted over 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 time. I'll see if we can find that. I know I've read it. It was all some of it's four years old, five years old, but it's not annually. No, it is not. Some of it was very qualitative, though, and, and, the, and the studies that were done with the uh, with beachgoers, whereas um, a simple quantitative tracking study is not should be done as a part of a, a brand. It's not being done. There would be, uh, we would, we would, we could certainly have an idea through our research, but we would know, you know, we could target globally, which is what a lot of these st studies have done. You know, I, I think we're spending a lot of time on detail, and we have a, an agenda that's coming to a close. Yeah, if I can add, um, I would just like keeping an eye on time. I would just suggest that um, this item be direct be. 
how do you word the right wording so if this committee could direct or yet yeah, direct me to do the background research for this item and then at the next meeting I can bring my findings about the project to, to this committee then based off that report then we can bring that recommendation to council and it'll most likely make it onto the September council meeting anyway so it wouldn't be delayed at all mm -hmm. perfect and is there oh go ahead Celia I think that's a great idea um, to kind of move it forward because Caitlin can also look at what we've done in the past and maybe it's updating what has been done in the past uh, one other thing I wanted to mention in the past we have invited lifestyle reporters and bloggers uh, to Simcoe County and they have come through whether it was RTO 7 or, or um, tourism Simcoe County and they visited Wasaga Beach for a day and they went to um, you know a B and C and then they went to Blue Mountain and they went to a B and C and they went to Clearview and they um, so those opportunities exist and it might be something that we can talk about at this level and again make a rem recommendation up to to Caitlin you find out what is being done right now for public relations activity you know and and, and, and bringing in uh, media and bloggers to uh, to report on the community there's probably there's probably work being done right now in that area. I have to believe. Yeah. Uh, final item that we have up here was uh, learn more about the H2I. Uh, is that what is your suggestion on that, uh, Caitlin? As uh, as how? Um, so at the next meeting, I'll invite the events department to attend, and perfect. perhaps they can catch us up on. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Um, we've got uh, for future meeting website review and a few more items for our, for future meetings that will be added to our agenda. Um, next meeting. Is there a recommend? Is there a day that we have to? That this so we have no specific day. Um, for this committee, so I was hoping just to have a quick discussion on what day works best for everyone at the table. I don't. Oh, I don't believe so. It's not. We've been doing it monthly. <laughs> My vote would be on, uh, would be Tuesdays. I, I think we should have at least have one more meeting prior to the end of our term to see where we are with these events and bring forward any other ideas. Uh, my my recommendation personally are, are Tuesdays, but. Um, if Tuesdays don't work for people, then we can work around it. How does the 27th look, uh, September 27th? Yep. So Chris, when you, can we parallel that? When is the last uh, council uh, meeting for the town? Do we know? Um, don't know, but this will be... Uh, correct, Through you chair, the new uh, the inaugural meeting of councils November fifteenth. So this committee can meet up to August or August, October twenty fourth is the election. So up to that date. How does October fourth look? Just since the twenty seventh is not good. Through your chair, sorry, are you talking about for your next meeting? Next meeting. So just, just I would just be obviously mindful of if you're trying to accomplish anything and you want to maybe come back in September, is there anything that you want done sooner than that? Because There's, you're just kind of putting yourself in a shorter time period if you need to meet again. There are actions to be put in place. Do you need more time? Um, 20th works for me. Every other day does not that week. 20th is a Tuesday. Okay. 
So we have September 20, 10 a.m. Perfect. That's our next. And uh, and can I have a motion for adjournment? Gary, second. Sylvia, all in favor? Adjourned. Thanks.